Hello, hello, hello. So we are still talking about monopolies, but we're going to take a different approach to this video. We're going to be talking about how monopolies could potentially form. Now, what I want to say before we get started is what I'm about to cover in this video does not exclusively apply to monopolies. However, it can potentially lead to monopolies. And in another homework video, we are going to be looking at government policies that stops what I'm talking about in this video from turning into a monopoly. Whew, that was a mouthful. It'll make way more sense when we, once we get into it. So we have only one LEQ. What is the difference between <clears throat> an interlocking directorate and mergers? So once again, we are talking about interlocking directorates and mergers. And I want you guys to keep in mind what we're really concerned about is monopolies. What I'm teaching in this video doesn't only apply to monopolies. It can apply to other forms of business structures and the business world. But we're looking at how monopolies can potentially get started in the first place. And remember, with a few exceptions, monopolies are illegal. This is what can start a monopoly in the first place. All right. So what is an interlocking directorate? So you guys know by now what a board of directors are. Please remember that the stockholders, aka the owners of a corporation, elect a board of directors who run the company. Now, that's all fine and dandy. But in the 1920s, you all have heard of Rockefeller and Standard Oil. Well, Rockefeller was a monopolist. He wanted to control anything and everything dealing with oil so he can be filthy rich. And what he did was very clever. Keep in mind, at the time, this was perfectly legal. So Rockefeller, the owner and CEO of Standard Oil, he took members of his own personal board of directors. So imagine you are a board of director for Standard Oil. That means you are one of the head honchos. You get to choose how that business goes. And he took those members and he saw to it that the, these members were also placed on the board of directors of other competing companies. Do you all see an issue there? That's the same thing as if all the board members of Google also were the board members of Apple. So here's the deal. Rockefeller, his standard oil company, was notorious for driving competitors out of business and pressuring customers not to deal with rival oil companies. The reason he was notorious is because he placed members of Standard Oil's board of directors onto the board of competing corporations. Because the same group of people controlled both companies, it was less tempting for them to compete with one another. That is, let's keep Standard Oil way over here and let us do our own thing, form a monopoly, take over the world, and you guys with your oil company, you stay way over there. And if you were, if Google were to say that to Apple, Apple would be like, ha ha, you're kidding us, we're at war. However, if the board of directors were on Google and on Apple were the same, they'd be like, you know what, we can make this work out in the best interest for both of us. So interlocking directorates are when the board members from one company are also on another company. Now here's what you need to know. Interlocking directorates are illegal when the companies are in the, in the same industry. For example, the example I just did, Apple and Google cannot share board of director members. That is illegal. There was legislation that was passed. Think of America's role of government in our mixed market economy. Legislation was passed after Rockefeller started appointing board members to other companies because he was just getting so darn powerful. So nowadays, that is illegal. However, there are board members that serve on the board of directors of different companies in different industries. For example, a board member working for Google may also be able to be a board member working for Pepsi or Coke. They are not in the same industry. Now, I want you guys to take a look at these graphics I have down here. On the left-hand side, you have the octopus man. That's an example of an illegal interlocking directory. Pretend he's a board member, and he, if you can't read it, it says bank on all the buildings. Nowadays, in the 1920s, this was okay, but because of legislation and new laws, it's no longer okay. You cannot have the same board member 
on different companies in the same industry. Now on the right hand side, you all do not need to know these names. I'm not trying to pick on any individual person, but these are three very powerful individuals. These individuals serve on the boards of many different companies. This is a legal interlocking directorate. Let's look at Vernon E. Jordan Jr. there on the bottom. He's a little guy on the bottom of your screen. So he sits on the board. So that is, remember guys, the board of directors, they control it. He sits on the board of Sarah Lee Company. Sarah Lee makes a lot of snack cakes and unhealthy dessert products. Okay, cool. He also is a board member of American Express, a credit card company. Okay, Sarah Lee and American Express really don't have anything in common. So it's cool. It's okay. He also sits on the board of Asbury Automotive Group, JCPenney, and Xerox. Those are all examples of legal interlocking directorates because they are in the same industry. Let's move on. So if you look back at our LEQ, we are comparing and contrasting interlocking directorates and mergers. So what is a merger? A merger is a, the combination that results from when a company of one corporation buys more than half the stock of another corporation. Remember, class, the owners of a corporation are the stockholders. If a company has enough money, all they have to do is buy 51% of the other company's stock and they now own that company. This happens all the time and we are about to do some examples. So there are three types of mergers that happen. Horizontal, vertical, and what's called a conglomerate. So a horizontal merger is when two or more co corporations are in the same business or industry merged together. Now, you guys know by now, Jared's Juice Bar is going to be a sole proprietorship, but let's say life goes good and I turn into a corporation and I expand all across the United States and the world. But some upstart named John Smith starts an organic juice emporium. Well, if I have enough money and if the law allows it, which we'll get into in, in a different homework video, I can buy 51% of stock in Smith's Organic Juice Emporium. Now, Smith's Organic Juice Emporium is owned by Jared's Juice Bar. That sounds awesome. So that's a horizontal merger when you merge with someone in the same industry. For example, if Home Depot were to buy out Lowe's, that's a horizontal merger. A vertical merger is a little bit different. When I say vertical merger, I want you guys to think about supply chain. So pick a product and think about that product in its rawest, purest form, AKA land. It's best explained through an example. Let's say we are a paper producing company. So imagine your printer paper. A lot of printer paper is made by Xerox. Okay, cool. So Xerox is a company and an example of a vertical merger would be if Xerox buys the lumber mill, buys the land where the trees are cut down at. And furthermore, what if Xerox opened up an office supply store? So this one company, Xerox, who makes paper, also bought out a company that cuts down wood to make paper, and they also bought out a company to, that actually sells the paper. Pretty neat, vertical merger. And finally, we have a conglomerate. This is a term I need you all to know, it's called conglomerate. Conglomerates rule the world. We're basically talking about oligopolies now, but getting on the border of monopoly. So a conglomerate is a large corporation made up of smaller corporations dealing with unrelated businesses. So what I want you guys to understand here is that we're still talking about monopolies. These three types of mergers without government control lead to monopolies. So these two types of mergers, they are legal. However, there is a lot of government regulation overseeing these mergers to make sure that they don't form a monopoly. So let's look at some examples. Here's some common examples of horizontal mergers. You all probably did not know this, but Adidas is not an American company. Adidas is a German company. And did you all know, in 2005 or 2006, Adidas, the company, bought Reebok. Yes, you heard me correctly. Adidas owns Reebok. Now, Reebok is still its own company, doing its own thing. 
but Adidas owns 51% of Reebok stock. And I'll let you guys read that little pamphlet there if you want to. If you Google search Adidas owns Reebok, you'll get lots of good information. Now the sign on the right, I'm sure, sure you guys have seen this gas station sign on many different corners. Uh, Exxon used to be its own company. Mobile Oil used to be its own company. They bought out each other and now they are the Exxon Mobile Company. So once again, these are two companies in the same industry coming together to form a super company, if you will. Now keep in mind, just because Adidas purchased Reebok does not mean they have a monopoly. So it's legal. However, if Adidas purchased Reebok and Nike and Skechers and several other big time shoe manufacturers, then we might have an issue. If ExxonMobil were to purchase BP and Shell and Texaco, then we might have an issue. But right now, all is well. It's just a really big, powerful company because of a merger. Let's look at vertical mergers. So remember, vertical, I want to think of supply chain. So here in the center, we have some car manufacturing company. Let's say it's Ford, for example. Okay, let's just say it's Ford. All right, so Ford makes vehicles. And an example of a mer vertical merger would be, well, okay, let's say that Ford needs tires for their vehicles. Rather than buying from other companies, let's just buy that company itself and make it so much more efficient and cheaper. So Ford might actually buy the raw materials needed to make the rubber of tires that they put on Ford vehicles. And then once it gets to the original manufacturing, that's great. But you guys should know by now, a lot of Ford vehicles are manufactured in Detroit. They do not drive Ford F-150s from Detroit way down here to Florida to sell to us. Now, Ford can buy the shipping business that is responsible for shipping Ford F-150s from Detroit, Michigan to all across the United States and the world. And finally, as you guys know, there are plenty of Ford dealerships around as well. Another example of a vertical merger is when Disney bought out Pixar. Pixar does not make movies. I must emphasize that. Pixar does not make movies. Disney makes movies. Pixar is an animation studio. Pixar is a bunch of people who are really good with computers and graphic design and animatronics that makes what other people tell them to make. So Disney being Disney, one of the most powerful companies in the world, they purchased Pixar. That way, Disney is now more efficient and cheaper at making movies. You guys see a lot of Pixar movies are owned by Disney. Now, do not get overwhelmed at this graph, but conglomerates rule the world, okay? I considered showing you conglomerates in our oligopoly video. Remember, that's a market structure in which an industry is dominated by a few companies, but it was appropriate to show here as well. So what I have here are 10 companies that own just about everything. Now it's not a monopoly. Remember, it's not a monopoly because they don't own everything. They own just about everything. Did you guys know that let's pick on Pepsi right now. Pepsi first owns Pepsi, the industry, but it also owns Quaker Oatmeal. It also owns all these different chips brands. It also owns all these different types of soda. Did you know Pepsi owns Gatorade? Did you know Pepsi owns Dole Pineapple Juice? Did you know that Pepsi owns the Yum Company, which owns A&W Root Beer Stores? It owns Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC. You probably didn't know that. Now, I know on your screens you guys probably can't see all of these different industries, but I want you to know is that these 10 companies here own m most of the smaller companies that produce everything you and I buy. I do not know about you, but that frightens me to a certain extent. Now, you all watch TV, unfortunately. Most of you watch way too much TV, so I think I'll give you an infographic with some TV. These are the biggest companies that own most of the TV stations. Disney owns ABC Network, and ABC owns ABC Family, ABC News, ABC Daytime, and ABC Entertainment, all of which are owned by Disney. Disney owns ESPN, which also owns ESPN2, ESPNU, so on and so forth. Disney also owns A&E. 
so on and so forth, so on and so forth. So these are examples of conglomerates. Now remember, conglomerates are super powerful organizations worth billions and billions of dollars. They control the majority of the industry they operate in. However, that's an oligopoly, not a monopoly. There are government rules and policies out there that prevent conglomerates from getting so big. For instance, if Disney here were to purchase NBC and were to purchase Time Water and were to purchase CBS, then we'd have an issue. That's a monopoly. But the way it stands right now, even though these three or four companies are stupid powerful, it's not a monopoly. It's time for LEQ review. I hit you guys a lot of information. So our original LEQ is what's the difference between interlocking directorate and mergers? So there's a definition of interlocking directorates. I need you to know examples when they are legal and when they are illegal. We also talked about, about the three most common types of mergers, horizontal, vertical, and conglomerates. Thank you for watching these videos as we continue to widen down unit three. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.